So starting off here, I do want to mention that during the course of this hurricane's life cycle, you know, it started out uh, over here and has since moved uh, more west than north. Um, I do just want to point out that when the hurricane was situated over here along, uh, you know, this 20 north parallel line uh, here, the projected cone of uncertainty looked uh, kind of something like this. And since then, it has absolutely moved uh, further west than originally predicted. And fortunately, it has lifted uh, north enough where it did not impact uh, Puerto Rican and Dominican islands straight on. Um, obviously, they're going to have to deal with flooding from the feeder bands and stuff like that. Uh, as well as, you know, Turks and Caicos. I don't think the Bahamas are going to see too much of an impact other than some heavy rains. Um, thankfully, it has moved uh, north enough to miss these major population centers. However, it has definitely tracked a little bit farther west than currently or, or than earlier projected to. So that is something to keep in mind here, that this cone of uncertainty could keep shifting a little bit to the west. However, um, that is always a possibility, especially with how this hurricane has been handling itself. However, I do agree with the National Hurricane Center. I do think that it is going to begin to take this pretty sharp northward jog uh, tonight and especially tomorrow. Go ahead and take a look at why. So... For most of the day earlier, this hurricane, as you can kind of see here, um, we'll just kind of uh, put an X where the eye was, and let's go back. Let's go back a couple, couple frames here. This timeline is not necessarily uh, the best, but um, so as you can see, this hurricane has been traveling kind of along this 21 north um, latitude, line of latitude here uh, for most of the day today, but over this past, this, this loop here is about uh, three hours, and since during... The duration of this loop you can see that the hurricane has actually uh, begun to move off of this line here if I go back a couple frames my computer's not agreeing with me right now you can see it it's moving um, it's starting to take that northward jog here and it's actually moving uh, more north than it more north than it is west at this point so Definitely favorable signs here um, for that, that northward turn that we've been waiting for for uh, quite a while now as it's went way more west than uh, first expected. It finally looks like the hurricane is starting to take that northward turn here. And this is why. So we are talking about this in my last video on Friday evening. Um, but we have two high pressures here. We have one high pressure off here in the central Atlantic Ocean and it's just this is kind of really broad we kind of call this like a, a banana type high uh, you can see it's just really broad almost has two centers uh, here two high pressure centers so kind of just a broad high pressure out here with winds let's go ahead and erase this circle we have winds um, on the western side from the south and on the eastern side we have them from the north so uh, these winds at 500 millibars it's kind of going to steer steer this northward and then we have a high out here off in the central to western United States uh, same thing we have winds over here from the north uh, and then it just kind of starts to weaken out here and now I think this could be this this high out here in the uh, central to western United States is part of the reason I think that Aaron has went a lot farther west than it has than it was currently or uh, earlier projected to so that high was originally supposed to be centered around here which means this region 
off to the um off to the east was gonna see higher wind shear and what hurricanes don't like is wind shear um this area out here is this high uh pretty strong wind shear in this area so what sorry this is kind of hard to see with the yellow i can go ahead and redraw this uh, so you know they don't like wind shear and so a closer to these high pressures a little bit stronger wind shear what this hurricane was going to do is it's going to take this escape path here in between the two highs now um, because this high pressure center is uh, situated a little bit farther west than originally anticipated that has caused a little bit weaker shear uh, out here which is kind of encouraging Aaron to move a little bit farther west however I do still think especially with this uh, jet stream up here with multiple embedded short waves and a, a long wave trough out here I think that Aaron is gonna take this escape route right up here into this jet stream and kind of then just become another uh, trough of the jet stream so um, let's go ahead. We can take a look here. This is the European ensemble and as you can see here European totally thinks that it's gonna split the difference uh, it gets a little it get I will say it gets a little close here um, To uh, Virginia and the Carolinas. I do know that a county uh, on the coast there of North Carolina has issued a state of emergency just due to uh, flooding and uh, kind of overwashing concerns with large waves, large tides here from uh, Hurricane Aaron. I do know that is the case, and it looks like it is going to get pretty darn close here, but still seems that this storm is going to end up splitting the difference here uh, between Bermuda and the east coast of the United States, thanks to these blocking highs. So, interesting stuff here. Again, Beautiful hurricane out here in the Northern Caribbean. Uh, pretty little impact on humanity, which is definitely a good thing. However, we will continue to monitor uh, as this thing continues to meander out here in the Atlantic Ocean.